As with any instrument, a filled system thermometer is only as good as its installation. Most of the thermometers use the same type well. Always be sure the well is made up tight. The well must be sized properly to ensure a good snug fit for the bulb. It must also be long enough to give total immersion of the bulb in the process. Any airspace between the bulb and well increases the time lag for a temperature change. Care must also be taken to make sure the bulb is inserted to the bottom of the well. A large error may result if the bulb is not totally immersed. Make sure the sensing point is in a location which gives a good representative temperature. If it is near a heater coil in a tank, it will read too high. If it is near the fill line, it will not read correctly either. If the elevation of the bulb is different than that of the pressure element in a vapor pressure type system, a zero adjustment to compensate for the static head pressure may have to be made after the bulb is installed. Usually the receiving element has been calibrated at the factory for a specific elevation difference, but it should be checked again after installation. Be sure the bulb is accessible and that there is adequate room for its removal in case of problems. When removing the bulb from a high temperature installation, remember to wear gloves and be very careful not to touch the bulb with your bare hands. If the process temperature is 500 degrees, the bulb will be 500 degrees and will take some time to cool enough to touch. The capillary tubing should be securely fastened in such a manner that it is out of the way of operation and maintenance personnel. Keep it away from areas where it can be stepped on or have something dropped on it. Most of our installations will have heavy stainless steel capillary tubing. The delicate copper capillary tubing will have a protective shield of spiral wound copper, lead, rubber, or plastic. One of the weak points is right where it comes out of the bulb. Be very careful not to bend the tubing too sharply or it will kink. Avoid subjecting the capillary tubing to extremes of heat or cold. This makes ambient temperature compensation very difficult. Coil any excess tubing and tie it up behind the receiving instrument out of the way. Now work exercise one in your workbook. Suppose you receive a work request to repair a fill system temperature controller. First, inform the appropriate operator that you will be working on the system. Since this is a controller, the control valve will either have to be bypassed or put on manual control. Unless the problem is obvious, do some analyzing before making any repairs or adjustments. A reference dial thermometer is installed in close proximity to most controller bulbs. If there is a discrepancy between the controller and dial thermometer readings, replace the dial thermometer with a new or recently calibrated one before assuming the controller is wrong. If there is no
no checkpoint near the well, remove the bulb and check the temperature in the well with a good dial thermometer or a glass thermometer. Be sure the thermometer is inserted to the bottom and left a sufficient length of time to reach the correct temperature. When removing the bulb, make sure the thermal well doesn't unscrew. If it did, the results could be catastrophic. If, when loosening the jam nut, you see some of the process fluid leaking out, tighten the jam nut and notify the operator that the thermal well has a hole in it. This means the tank, vessel, or pipe will have to be depressured before the bulb can be pulled out and the thermal well replaced. When removing the bulb, notice if it was pushed in all the way. If it wasn't, the reading could have been lower. Or higher than the process fluid, depending on whether it is in hot or cold service. Notice whether the instrument went to ambient temperature or not. If it did not respond at all, check the capillary tubing for crimped or mashed spots. Crimped or mashed tubing could also make the instrument response slow. Examine the inside of the controller for loose, bent, or broken linkage. Check the receiving element for signs of distortion caused by overranging the instrument. What would you conclude if the indicator is driving downscale, the linkage is in good working order, and the temperature at the bulb is higher than the low end of the range. We can assume that we have lost the filling medium and will have to replace the filled system. The replacement of the filled system and subsequent calibration is best done in the shop. The best calibrating method uses two oil baths. Set the temperature of one oil bath in the lower third and the other bath in the upper third of the instrument range. Be sure to use a laboratory test thermometer to monitor the bath temperature. The linkage adjustments for span, zero and linearity are the same as the adjustments you have studied in previous modules. Be sure to give the instrument time to stabilize at the bath temperature before making any adjustments. Refer to the appropriate manufacturer's literature if any problems are encountered in either the replacement or calibration of thermal elements. Now work exercise number two for segment 2.15.3. The bimetallic thermometer is perhaps more widely used than any other type of industrial thermometer. Some have rigid, straight stems, and some have a swivel head, like this one. The swivel head allows the thermometer to be read from any installation angle. The temperature sensor is a bimetallic spiral in the end of the thermometer stem. 
high metallic spiral is fastened directly to the stem. As the spiral expands and contracts, the stem is turned. The indicating pointer is fastened directly to the other end of the stem. As the stem unwinds or rewinds, the correct temperature is indicated on the dial. Bimetallic thermometers are rugged. They have no links or sectors, and they are accurate to within 1% of the range. The maximum temperature limit is about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The minimum temperature is limited to the temperature at which the sensing spiral becomes irresponsive and sluggish, usually at minus 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The standard stem OD is 250 one thousandths of an inch. The stem lengths vary from 4 inches up to 24 inches for standard lengths. Biometallic thermometers have one half inch national pipe threads at the hub. One of the most common and dangerous installation mistakes is that the thermometer is erroneously installed without a well. If this thermometer be removed from a pressurized system, the process fluid would be released to the atmosphere. For process use, the thermometer must be in a thermal well. Also, for good response, the well length must be suitable for the stem to be on or near the bottom. Ordinarily, it is not economical to repair the biometallic thermometer. There is a calibrating adjustment for setting most of them to a known temperature. On some brands, the pointer is pulled and reset to a known temperature. If they do not respond to calibration, replace them with new ones. Now work exercise number one for segment 2.15.4.